The story takes place in Imperial Russia, around the year 1874. Prince Stefan, or Steve Oblonsky, is a pleasure-loving aristocrat living in Moscow. Unbeknownst to his wife, Daria Alexandrovna, or Dolly, Steve has been engaging in an affair with their children's governess. But it all comes to light when Dolly finds a love letter from the governess. She is extremely distressed and furious, and never wants to see Steve, or even let him see his kids again. Steve then writes to his sister, Anna Karenina, who lives in St. Petersburg. She is married to a high-ranking government minister, Alexei Karenin. Anna reads the letter while getting dressed and senses it to be a matter of urgency. She decides to go to Moscow as per Steve's request and try to persuade Dolly to forgive her brother. She receives permission from Alexei, although he is not too fond of her helping someone seek forgiveness for adultery, even if it's her brother. Anna thinks long years of marriage with children should weigh more than a silly short infatuation. That makes sense, but surely sin has a price, according to her husband. Alexei is a busy man, busy enough to not have time to listen to their son read so Anna promises her son, Suryaja, that she'll hear him read instead. Suryaja is reluctant to let his mother go, but gives in when she assures him she'll bring him gifts. On the train, Anna sits opposite to Countess Vrinskaya, who's going to meet her son, unlike Anna, who left hers behind. The Countess takes a liking to Anna despite their first time meeting each other. But Anna has heard a lot about the Countess before as she is an infamous adulteress. Extramarital affairs were very much detested by Russian society at that time. Vrinskaya owns up to her actions and even though her sons are upset with her, she claims she would rather regret the outcome than regret not doing it, as anyone in love would do. Steve is preparing to leave his office when he is visited by his best friend, Konstantin Levin, a rich landowner, who has come back after a long time to seek advice. Levin rejects the aristocratic life and prefers farming in the country and is therefore looked down upon by other elites. He's still in love with Dolly's sister, Ekaterina or Kitty, and wishes to propose to her, because he cannot live without her. Steve encourages him to talk to her at her family's banquet in the evening. He advises Levin to make some changes in his attire and asks to meet at a restaurant before evening. When they meet, Steve rambles on about how, after years of marriage, men like him are still vigorous and thriving while their wives are old, exhausted and weakened, making the men susceptible to falling for other younger women. Levin fails to understand his point. Steve informs him of Kitty's new romantic endeavor, that is Count Vronsky, a handsome military officer from St. Petersburg. But Steve and Dolly root for Levin against Vronsky. Levin arrives early at the banquet and Kitty spots him and calls him over. She is feeling delightful, more so about the banquet, than meeting Levin. Levin takes the opportunity to propose but is met with a disappointing answer. It was expected, since Kitty is currently hoping to marry Vronsky. The crowd starts to fill in, and Levin retreats disheartened, when a colonel recognizes him and informs him of his brother, Nikolai's whereabouts. He also bumps into Vronsky, who joins Kitty for a dance, but he is unable to say anything to him. Levin finds his brother who has become very sick and frail. Nikolai too, shows a simpler life after renouncing all his inheritance. He advises Levin to do the same and marry one of his peasants just like how he married a prostitute, Maria. Seeing his brother in deteriorating health, Levin leaves him some money and begs him to see a doctor. He invites him and his wife to stay with him until he recovers. Steve goes to receive Anna, and Vronsky arrives to get his mother, Vronskaya, at the train station. Anna and Vronsky catch each other's eyes while briefly passing by. Vronsky then notices her with Steve and realizes who she is. When Anna returns to get her luggage and bid the Countess goodbye, she gets introduced to Vronsky who apologizes for not recognizing her. Just when he plants a kiss on her hand, as if a sign from the universe, the train suddenly jolts and moves forward, followed by a commotion outside. People rush out to see a railway worker who had been run on by the train during the accidental movement. The poor worker happens to be the sole breadwinner of his house. Anna feels for his family and is surprised by Vronsky's generous donation. Anna inquires about Vronsky and learns that he is wooing Kitty. Steve admits to feeling ashamed and really wants to set things right with Dolly so Anna asks him to return home early while she does what she can in the meantime. After some small talk with Dolly, Anna brings up the issue. She tries to console Dolly who immediately starts weeping and exclaims that she cannot bring herself to forgive her husband. Steve was at fault for giving into fleeting desires but his love for his wife and children is real. But knowing this doesn't ease her pain. Anna warns Dolly that her marriage will forever remain wretched if there is no forgiveness and no moving on, even if they both still loved each other. When Steve comes home, the kids all run to him and Dolly accepts him at last. Anna feels bored at events and hence doesn't wish to attend the Babrashev's ball, but Kitty and Steve insist. Anna teases Kitty as she's excited about the ball, solely because she would draw everyone's attention for being with Count Vronsky. Anna longs to be that age again, when one is surrounded by a haze of daydreams. She was also 18 when she got married to Alexei. Vronsky visits at a late hour and just leaves without a message. He does, however, spot Anna absent-mindedly staring at him. Meanwhile, Levin retires to his country estate and fields. He is still heartbroken, but he declares that he has given up on Kitty. At the ball, Kitty is immediately asked for a dance. She reserves one for the boy and starts looking for Vronsky, when she's whisked away by another man, 
who is also reserved on her dance card. At the end of the dance, he hoists her up and takes her to Anna and Steva who had just arrived. She greets them with a curtsy and refuses Steva's offer to dance. She suggests he dance with Anna who initially refuses too, but agrees when she sees Vronsky approach. Vronsky dances with Kitty and compliments her but his gaze is fixed upon Anna the whole time, and that embarrasses Kitty in front of her parents. Kitty begins to notice the unexpected tension between Anna and Vronsky, who eventually asks Anna to dance with him. If she didn't, he claims he'd leave the ball immediately. Anna obliges for Kitty's sake but as they begin to dance, they become so lost and mesmerized by each other that soon, one dance turns into many, and they slowly start attracting everyone's gazes. All the while, Kitty has to dance with several different men, disappointing her mother who wanted to see some progress with Vronsky. The moment Anna snaps out of it, she realizes what she's done and backs out, letting Kitty continue the dance with Vronsky. Shocked and terrified, Anna decides to leave for Petersburg right away. She is immensely sorry and ashamed of her actions but somehow, she cannot stop thinking about Vronsky and Kitty being together. At a stop, Anna steps out of the train only to be met with Vronsky, who also left Moscow with her. He refuses to go back to Kitty and insists that he needs to be wherever Anna is. It doesn't matter to him that it's wrong and immoral to fall for a married woman. Anna wants him to stop pursuing her. She thinks he'll forget her if he's a good man, as will she. She tries to be quite firm on her stance. When they reach Petersburg, Vronsky doesn't get a chance to talk to her again since Alexei picks her up. Vronsky visits his friend Pierre whose wife is unfaithful and complains about not getting a divorce from him because he wants to keep living off her riches. Anna reflects and ponders on her life. She loves her son dearly but her marriage, although steady, is very mundane and lacks passion and momentum. She also appears to be dull and unenthusiastic when Alexei prepares for intercourse. One evening, she presumably begins to write to Vronsky but discards the letter, deciding otherwise. Princess Betsy Tverskaya, Vronsky's cousin, is a friend of the Karenins. Anna is in her social circle and attends several events and operas with her. Vronsky ends up following them everywhere, sparking gossip and rumors. Anna is amused by him and somehow finds herself hanging out with Betsy more than other elites, even those whom Alexei wants her to visit, for example Countess Lydia. Lydia is a woman who is absurdly fond of Alexei Karenin. The gossip seems to have reached Vronsky, who offers her son a promotion to a posting at Tashkent, as an attempt at preventing a scandal. But Vronsky chooses to stay in Petersburg. He realizes the ridiculousness of his obsession but does nothing to halt it. Anna is invited to Betsy's dinner party but she would be running late, since Lydia wants her to attend a church meeting. At the party, Vronsky arrives first and waits for Anna. Betsy and her friends discuss the two, and while most of them find their growing interest to be insulting Alexei, Princess Mayakaya thinks Anna is a sharp, calculative woman while Alexei is foolish for not realizing. Betsy warns Vronsky not to expect anything from a married woman, and advises him to pull himself together before he is deemed a desperate loser in society. Vronsky makes up his mind and leaves for good, just before Anna rushes into the party. She's disappointed that he left but is soon surprised to find him right behind her. She ineffectively tries a cigarette of his and then decides she'll try another one later, hinting at the possibility of meeting him again for which he's eager and impatient. She disapproves of his reckless and wild behavior, especially at the ball in Moscow, and he blames her for it. Everyone in the room is mindful of this flirtation. So when Alexei joins the party, Princess Mayakaya, who supports her, helps her talk to Vronsky without looking suspicious. Vronsky wants to know what is to become of them. Anna realizes she's feeling guilty for nothing and feels exasperated. She wants to be left alone but Vronsky persists with his question of what she truly wants. He lets her know he could still take up that posting in Tashkent but it depends on her answer. Anna only wants peace but that's impossible if they want to be together. They could either have the greatest happiness or endless misery, he says. They are then interrupted by Alexei who leaves without Anna because she wishes to stay longer. When Anna is about to leave, Vronsky threatens to take up the promotion again and she finally caves in. She admits she doesn't want him to leave. When she returns home, Alexei warns her about attracting undesirable attention. He believes his own eyes and since he hasn't noticed anything odd between her and Vronsky, he doesn't doubt her. Alexei thinks expressing jealousy over his wife is insulting to her character and to his own reputation. It didn't matter which way her feelings swayed because they are vowed to each other by law and have a son together. And more so because divorce was considered a crime against God. He later apologizes in case he was wrong about it. Anna repeatedly claims to be tired and waves the topic away, having nothing to say to her husband. She says it's too late to have this conversation, but she's not just talking about the time. She secretly means it's too late for her to gain control over things and soon, she ends up meeting Vronsky at a hotel and eventually sleeping with him. It's only the beginning for them but she realizes it's the end of everything for her. All she has now is ecstasy of finally being with her lover. Steva visits Levin, who's not interested about political news but rather about Kitty's well-being. Even after learning how she was 
then abandoned. He doesn't want to try again, fearing another rejection. Steva informs him of Kitty's upcoming trip to Ergashevo which is near to Levin's field. Steva also nonchalantly mentions his new affair with the ballerina. Kitty still despises both Vronsky and Anna but she decides to put it all past her. Dolly assures her there's better men out there, but Kitty has begun to loathe the idea of marriage due to so many bad examples around her. She doesn't want to discuss Levin either. Anna relishes Vronsky's love and her sense of guilt is shoved aside by his happiness and pleasure. Lydia expresses concern about the rumors surrounding Anna but Alexei firmly believes she has done no wrong. She's not the only one bothered, as Vronskaya is now trying to fix up a young princess, Sorokina, with her son. Vronsky's brother advises him to get married instead of chasing a fruitless cause that could ruin his career, but he just brushes it off. He shows him his cherished horse that will be participating in the upcoming horse race. Vronsky is anxious before the race and decides to meet Anna. She reveals that she's pregnant and that makes him incredibly happy. He suggests she disclose everything to Alexei and divorce him. They can elope with their child and live in love freely. But Anna refuses because she'll never see her son again and claims she's more than happy with the current state of things. Vronsky is not content with them but he doesn't persist. Anna and her son, Suryaja stay for a while at the Karenin estate outside St. Petersburg where Alexei drops by unexpectedly. Anna is a bit anxious and flustered and she ends up inviting him to the horse race. He spots both Anna and Vronsky, who is a contestant. Vronskaya sits with Princess Sorokina and her mother. She throws a nasty look towards Anna, despite having been in her shoes herself at some point. Anna discreetly notices Alexei behind her, while he observes her greeting Vronsky's brother and become extremely anxious as the race begins. Vronsky is not leading and he tries to get his horse to pick up speed, but it unfortunately loses track and bursts through the fences, slamming him onto the ground. The horse breaks its back and cannot get back up which compels a very frustrated and livid Vronsky to end its on the spot. Meanwhile in the stadium, Anna loses her calm and begins to shout and wail on seeing her beloved Vronsky injured and hurt. Her overreaction does the job of outing her affair and confirming people's suspicion, despite Alexei's poor attempt at making it seem like she's shouting for him, since he shares the same first name as Vronsky. The strange ordeal is somehow passed and Alexei tries not to bring it up, but it's unavoidable. He does not doubt or accuse her of infidelity, but instead gravely warns her against such displays of her feelings in public. Anna is sick of pretending and lying to her husband who might be somewhat foolish as alleged or just not ready to accept that his marriage is broken. She admits everything to him and surrenders her fate to him. Alexei is distressed and mad and doesn't want this to tarnish his reputation. She is ordered to never see Vronsky again, or give anyone material to talk about. In return, she can still play the role of his dutiful wife and keep her image in public. Anna, however, continues to defy his orders and keeps meeting Vronsky. When she returns to Petersburg, she ends up revealing her pregnancy to Alexei in order to excuse herself from sleeping with him. He is vastly disappointed at the news and thinks he doesn't deserve to be put through this. Levin is at his field, mowing the harvest with his workers. It is very unusual for a master to sweat and grind alongside his servants, and so they are not used to him. He doesn't mind them being distant because he genuinely feels at peace when he's working. He feels it's wrong to own and sell servants like his father used to. He's also contemplating marrying one of the worker's daughter, but he makes no effort to. In the morning, he coincidentally gets a glimpse of Kitty in her carriage on the way to Ergashevo, and he realizes that he has not been able to move past her. Months later, Vronsky gets a letter from Anna who wants to see him urgently. He has not been visiting her a lot lately due to his military duties. While entering the Karenin estate, he passes Alexei, although Anna had mentioned he would have left already. Anna is hysterical and confused. She is well into her pregnancy and cannot bear to keep waiting long hours to see Vronsky. Moreover, she has had a dream which apparently foretold her of her demise during childbirth. She keeps swinging back and forth between emotions, muttering rude things and feeling horrible afterwards. Vronsky mentions that it hurt his honor to run into Alexei Alexei on the way to which Anna says he's already dishonorable enough to have another man's wife in bed. She blames her quarrelsome behavior on her inner demon. Alexei is unable to focus on his meeting, thinking about Vronsky and wondering how long he's been visiting behind his back. He barges in angrily and shoves Anna out of the way and begins to search her cabinets. He finds the letters from Vronsky and confiscates them to be used as grounds for divorce. They are required as proof because in Russia at that time, divorce would only occur when one of the spouses cheat or disappear. Alexei is leaving for Moscow and sternly asserts he won't be back until he has divorced Anna and left her with nothing, not even their son. He sends off Suryaja to live with a relative, even though Anna begs to be with him. Levin visits Steva for advice for the second time and gets the same response. Steva takes him to his house, where Kitty is. She's embarrassed to see him, but he is very glad to meet her again. 
She acknowledges she was immature and foolish back then and is somewhat relieved to see that his feelings haven't changed. After finishing his business in Moscow, Alexei meets Steva to break the news of initiation of divorce with his sister. Steva is shocked but he says nothing and instead drags him along to dinner. At the table, some guests start discussing Tumi who fought a duel for a woman, and the husband of the woman defeated the lover. Alexei finds this method of preserving a woman's honor quite stupid, because if the husband gets defeated, she remains a dishonorable woman. He also retorts that it cannot be love that makes you snatch another man's wife away. Levin wholeheartedly agrees with Alexei. He believes in pure love that exists solely by ruining something as sacred as marriage, is not true love, but merely lust and greed. Later, Dolly tries to convince Alexei to forgive Anna because he won't be at peace himself until he does. She speaks from her own experience. Alexei gave Anna multiple chances to fix things but she chose to ruin herself. Levin asks Kitty a question by spelling it out on blocks. He wants to know if her rejection last time was meant for forever. She tells him that she had no idea how strong his feelings were and how good a man he was back then. But she knows now, and she hopes he can forgive and forget her mistake. Levin professes his love to her again, making both of them cry happy tears. Alexei receives a letter from Anna who has gone into premature labor, and is feared to be on the verge of passing. She begs Alexei to come as she desperately seeks his forgiveness. Anna gives birth to a baby girl and asks the servants to keep her out of Alexei's sight so as to not hurt him even more. She acknowledges her sins and believes Alexei is kind enough to forgive her, and she's right. In spite of being betrayed so badly by her and resenting her for it, he still loves Anna. Vronsky is there too, and he's very distressed and scared for Anna's well-being. Anna persuades Alexei to forgive Vronsky as well and calls him a saint for it. Alexei tells Vronsky to leave, promising to send for him if Anna wishes to see him. Vronsky is ashamed and breaks down in front of Alexei. Vronsky's mother berates him for his soulless and unkempt appearance which is a result of his destructive obsession. She thinks a light affair with a married woman accentuates a man's reputation, but not the havoc he caused. She wants him to come live in Moscow with her. A few days later, Anna is still too sick to feed her own baby. Betsy informs Anna and Alexei that Vronsky would like to see her to bid goodbye before he leaves, but Anna refuses to receive him. Anna acts firm about it but loses it when they leave. When Alexei asks again if she's sure about her decision, she gets extremely agitated. She realizes she's a very ungrateful woman. She sought Alexei's forgiveness when she feared demise but she cannot bear to live through it now. She wants to see Vronsky but not to say goodbye, she wants to be with him forever. Her confession makes both her and Alexei overwhelmed with emotions. He warns her of the consequences of the irreparable action of eloping with her lover. She would lose all face in society, and be ridiculed and scorned wherever she goes. He reminds her that if he divorces her, she cannot marry Vronsky anyway and their baby, Anya, who is currently seen as a Karenin, would be declared an illegitimate child. Anna claims their love is beyond all this. As for Suryaja, Anna would perish for him readily but she wouldn't live in torment for the sake of him. He would forgive her when he's old enough to understand. It pains her to unwillingly send away Vronsky. Alexei cannot let her ruin herself completely, so he refuses to divorce her, and only reluctantly allows her to leave for the south with Vronsky and Anya. Levin and Anya are now a happily married couple, returning to Levin's estate. His brother, Nikolai, was nowhere to be found during their wedding, but he had returned and sought refuge at Levin's house along with his wife, Maria. Levin's maids had stopped working because they didn't want to be around Maria, a former prostitute. Nikolai's condition has gotten worse and Levin, despite knowing how much Nikolai needs Maria, plans to send her away to keep her out of Kitty's sight. He is very much shocked when Kitty takes it upon herself to tend to Nikolai along with Maria, without treating her as an untouchable. Levin then realizes that he married the right woman. Lydia brings news of a letter addressed to her from Anna who is back in Petersburg. Anna wants to see Suryaja for his birthday and Alexei claims it would be fair to let her do so. But Lydia thinks he would be giving her space to crawl back in, and convinces him not to. Anna becomes furious at this and bursts in the Karenin house and goes directly to Suryaja. She hugs him and cries, profusely admitting how much she missed him. She also tells him to be nice to Alexei since he's a much better parent than her. Suryaja is rejoiced to see her but their reunion is cut short by Alexei motioning Anna to leave. Anna is unable to sleep or do anything, or even look after Anya that night. When Vronsky arrives, he's excited to tell her that this family's country estate would soon be their new home, where they'd live peacefully after Alexei divorces Anna. But that's very unlikely now that Alexei has made up his mind. Meanwhile, Anna keeps getting ticked off by the smallest things, but Vronsky manages to be patient. She also accepts an invitation to an opera from one of Alexei's friends, even though Vronsky really doesn't want her to attend. She insists she's not ashamed of herself and he shouldn't be either. As expected, she is met with disparaging looks and the only person who talks to her is Princess Maya Kaya. The rest of her old friends don't even spare her a glance including Betsy. She notices Vronsky greet Princess Sorokina and her mother. Anna bears with the looks and whispers, and people refusing to be around her. But when a woman snaps loudly at her husband for speaking a few words to Anna, whom she refers to as a pompous slut, it really gets to her. The whole theater stares at her and she begins to tear up. 
Vronsky immediately rises to defend her but Betsy stops him for he would only be putting his own reputation down the drain, since for the world, she's still married to Alexei. She shows him how Anna would never live it down and so the best thing would be him marrying someone else, but Vronsky is highly stubborn. Later, at the hotel, Anna makes snarky jokes about Princess Sorokina and Vronsky seeing each other, but he shakes them off. She eventually breaks down and scolds Vronsky for letting her attend the opera. She was so sure she would be able to withstand the society's harshness, but she was wrong. Since she's become an insomniac, Vronsky has begun to use morphine to induce sleep in her. The next morning, Anna receives the same outcast treatment from the ladies at a restaurant. But she's soon joined by Dolly who makes no difference in her behavior towards Anna, making her surprised. Dolly delivers the news of Kitty expecting a baby soon and Anna is genuinely happy for her. Anna asks whether she disapproves of her and Dolly replies that she would have done the same, had she been in her shoes, but she would probably lack the guts. Besides, Dolly is brave enough to still love Steve after his never-changing acts of disloyalty. Anna has started drinking morphine religiously at this point and she goes through fluctuations of emotions and thoughts. Meanwhile, poor Vronsky falls victim to all her madness. She wants to go to their new house immediately and isn't willing to wait even a day longer even though Vronsky needs to say goodbye to his mother and talk some business with her. She begins to accuse him of hiding things and meeting women, specifically Princess Sorokina. She is constantly anxious and scared and believes he has stopped loving her because she made him give up on a successful future. Vronsky's love is the sole thing she is living off of and the end of that would mean the end of her. She calms herself down with more drinks and Vronsky caters to her wishes because he still loves her. His patience wears off soon, however, when she starts acting crazier and doubting him even more. He walks out angrily and Anna notices him fetch documents sent by his mother through Princess Sorokina and she imagines Sorokina laughing at her mockingly. When she acts like he's definitely going to leave her for the princess, Vronsky just stares hopelessly. Vronsky eventually goes to see his mother in Moscow and Anna follows after. On the train, her mind is fogged with fearful imaginations of Vronsky making love to Sorokina. As she walks mindlessly at the Moscow station, her mind begs to be freed from the internal agony that has become overbearing and her body complies. She proceeds to on the tracks between a running train, while asking God for forgiveness. At the same moment, Vronsky suddenly senses a rush of alarm, for reasons he doesn't know of yet. The epilogue of the movie shows Levin come to a realization that your decisions and desires in life don't always have a reason behind them. When the time comes, you just know. And when you do things, it's because you just want to. It's difficult to comprehend that in a way you write your own fate without clear reasons or motives. Levin is greatly happy with his fate and is thankful that he chose Kitty to be his wife and family, while Anna and Vronsky chose an unfortunate and tragic fate. Steva can be seen mourning and reflecting on both his and his sister's life. Alexei has retired and remains a good father to both Suryaja and Anya. 